I wanted your boldest predictions for the 2024 college football season. I want the stuff you believe in enough where you'd bet your own money on it. Like, here's what it looks like. First prediction tonight, and this would, this would raise a lot of eyebrows in the South, particularly Lee County, Alabama. Jacob from Indianapolis says Auburn wins nine games. He even says they knock on the door of the playoff. I'll just stop at Auburn wins nine games. This is an 8.5 on the boldness scale for me. Their over-under win total at FanDuel is 7.5. So this isn't just crazy, like out of the realm of possibility stuff. It's very simple what would have to happen here. Number one, Peyton Thorne would have to be the 2021 version of himself at quarterback. You would have to have that true freshman class erupt. They'd have to go off. The schedule that they play, I think, would have to have either a lot of one-possession games go their way or there may need to be a team or two there that we expect a lot from that just ends up not being good. So Oklahoma comes in there week five. They go uh, back-to-back at Missouri, at Kentucky. Like, let's say Oklahoma ends up being a bad team or Kentucky is bad or A&M Bama back-to-back at the end of the year. Let's say one or both of those underachieve. Well, all of a sudden, the schedule's more workable. Those are ways that you could win nine games. They, they should start 4-0. Alabama A&M, Cal, New Mexico, Arkansas. Notice, by the way, they don't leave home in September. October 5th is their first road game. So if you're a young team, a team that's going to lean on a lot of young players, and you're trying to get your legs under you, you could have no better start than that. But then you get out the gate, and then you get in the SEC play, and it gets real. I think that's an 8.5. Winning nine games in a year where – Oh, you got to lean on so many young guys. By Hugh Freeze's own admission on this show last month, they got to do that. I'm going to make that an 8.5. This next one is our first 10 of the entire cycle. We've been doing bold predictions, I think, five weeks in a row now. Jake said, Deion Sanders takes another job before the end of the season. If there's one thing Deion is good at, it's knowing when the ship is sinking and getting off quickly. This is a 10. How does this happen? In what world does this happen? Now, if you would have said... Dion leaves Colorado somehow after the season. Well, okay, that's not even that bold. But you're saying during the season. Okay, so one of two things could happen here outside of some scandal. One of two things could happen here. Either they're so good that he gets hired by another school, which is tough to see, but, but maybe. Or the other would be he's so bad they decide to fire him, but they're not going to do that. And in either of those scenarios... His son's literally the quarterback on the team. So what's he doing? Either voluntarily leaving him behind or being forced to involuntarily leave him behind? I don't think either of those things is happening. So I'm going to make that a 10. Is it a mutual parting of ways? Like, Does he go become the president of AFLAC? Are you suggesting he takes another coaching job? He, does he go into TV? And if he does any of those things, why is he leaving during the season, Jake? What do you know that I don't know? So until further notice, that's a 10 on the boldness scale. This one's also nearly a 10, but at least, well, let me read it to you and then you'll tell me what you think about it. Because I would actually like to see the next one happen. So Douglas in New Hartford, New York says, Nebraska goes 11-1 and and makes the college football playoff. That's a 9.75, but it's not a 10. 9.75. So they're over under 7.5. As you know, it's been a little while since Nebraska basically basically breathed the air of national relevance, period. And by national relevance, I mean being in the playoff hunt, to be clear. But Husker magic is a real thing. I do believe in Husker magic. Uh, You may have to dust it off, go up in the attic and open a couple old cardboard boxes and try to find it, but Husker magic could strike. Now, to me, winning nine games would be magical. You're telling me they're going to win 11 and they're going to the playoff. Well, that's a 9.75 on the boldness scale, but I do get what you see. Colin, keep this, keep this schedule up here for a second. If I just read it off, if I'm a Nebraska fan, so let's say I'm in North Platte, Nebraska tonight, and therefore I'm an eternal optimist. I believe Dylan Riola is just going to be a true freshman, All-American star quarterback, and I believe that our defense is – At least the staff is one of the best in the country, which you're right about that. It's just all going to come together for us this year. UTEP, win. Colorado, win. Northern Iowa, win. Illinois, win. We still haven't even left home. Our first road game is Purdue, manageable, win. Rutgers comes home, tough, but we should win that. At Indiana, yeah, look ahead spot. Ohio State on deck, but 
There's a new everything at Indiana, too. We should win that one. We should be undefeated, right? We should be 7-0. and We're going to Ohio State. Even if we lose that one, 7-1, and UCLA, please win. At USC, we're too physical for them. We'll go out there. That'll be one of the defining wins for Matt Rule. We'll win that one. Wisconsin comes in the next week. That's tough. At Iowa the week after that. But if things fall right, we could be on a roll by then. Imagine the momentum. We're 11-1. and You see how easy that was? In theory... It's a lot easier than in reality. So I'm going to make that a 9.75, but keep it on ice over here. Because inevitably, someone's going to make one of these predictions that's like a 9.5 or 9.75, and it comes true. We had three of those last year, 9.5 or bolder that came true. What about this last one? This last one fell short. Cam from Hinesville, Georgia said, UCF wins the Big 12. Or at least meets Utah in the championship game. No cam, no parentheses. We're just going UCF wins the Big 12. 9.25 on the boldness scale. It would be crazy. But in the Big 12, what are odds really? I mean, what is bold in the Big 12? So there's the group in the what I call like the lead pack of the odds at FanDuel. And UCF is in that lead pack. They're plus 1,200 to win the Big 12. But... They're one of like, I think, 10 teams that have plus 1,200 or better odds. And there's so much unknown with them. They're one of the big portal winning teams this cycle. K.J. Jefferson, you remember him at Arkansas? Quarterback feels like he was there forever. He He didn't retire. He didn't go to the NFL. He's at Central Florida now. And we had Malzahn on the show last year or last month when we were down there. And he was very careful. He said, I've never had another Cam Newton. K.J. Jefferson's not another Cam Newton. I'm not saying that. He just said, from a skill set standpoint, he's the closest thing to Cam Newton that I've had in terms of comparable skill set. Take it or leave it. And so, (sighs) Gus Malzahn has dive-bombed college football too many times for me to write him off and write this prediction off. I'm going to put 9.25 on it. It is bold, and they end the season with games at West Virginia and then Utah. So they, they, they could build up. There's a, there's a back-to-back of Cincinnati and at Iowa State in conference play in the middle of the year. It's just it's the Big 12. It's going to be a whole bunch of one-possession games, and someone is going to be 5-1 and one in one-possession games, and why not Central Florida? Why not? 